I certainly hope this little incident hasn't put you off flying, miss. Statistically speaking, of course, it's, it's still the safest way to travel. Let's go. But inconspicuously. Through the window. And here we go. What is up, everyone? Welcome to DC Standom, your guided tour of the DC multiverse. It's been a while, but I'm your host, Mike Chikini, the editor-in-chief at DennyGeek.com. And each week, I'm bringing you discussions with writers, artists, actors, and experts covering everything from DC Comics to the movies and TV that make up the DCU. But it's a comics episode this week, and it is a big one because it is my absolute pleasure to be coming to you live because I've got one of my favorite writers ever, and a man who is more in tune with the spirit of the DC universe than just about anybody. I've got Mr. Mark Wade here with us live today. Mark, say hello to everybody. Good evening, sir. How are you this evening? Great to see you. I've been reading your books for as long as I can remember. This is the first time we've ever spoken, so I'm just thrilled to have you here. I'm happy to be here. The first issue of Mark and artist Dan Moore's new Shazam series is out today. And folks, I said I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. It is the single best Shazam comic in about 25 years or more. So you should definitely pick it up. Wade and Moore's ongoing Batman Superman World's Finest series is pretty much the platonic ideal of what you want from DC superheroes as well. And we're going to talk about all of it today as well as some exciting new projects on the horizon. Right, Mark? Am I right in saying all this? That is correct, sir. All right, good. But before we get into all this good stuff, you should know that this episode of DC Standom is presented by DC's Justice League Cosmic Chaos. Outright Games and Warner Brothers are calling DC fans of all ages to unite against chaos in the all-new open-world action-adventure game DC's Justice League Cosmic Chaos. Designed to be fun for the whole family, you can play as Batman, Superman, or Wonder Woman to battle the mischievous Mr. Mixus Pitalik, who has summoned Starro the Conqueror and other supervillains to keep the Justice League busy while he becomes the new self-appointed mayor of Happy Harbor. There's other DC heroes in this one, too. Players can also interact with Justice League members like Green Lantern, Cyborg, The Flash, and Aquaman, who all make cameos throughout the game. You can enjoy DC's Justice League Cosmic Chaos with friends and family in two-player instant action couch co-op to engage with the exciting and hilarious gameplay. Justice League Cosmic Chaos is available to play now on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Xbox XS, and Steam. For more information, head to OutrightGames.com and follow Outright Games on Twitter Instagram, and TikTok for all the latest updates and information on Justice League Cosmic Chaos. And yes, video games are a blast, but let's talk about some comics, shall we? Mark, I feel like we should start with Shazam because it's out today. Uh, It's the first issue, and it's a pretty momentous one. Uh, I personally can't really say enough good things about this but i feel like you've had a shazam story in you for a long time that you've wanted to tell why don't you tell us how this came about and how bringing dan mora onto this book came about too it's been you know a bucket list item forever i don't i'm I'm not had a story in my back pocket but i've had some concepts and i've had some thoughts about billy who he is how you know how he works and the family and so forth and editor Paul Kaminsky knew this and suggested some time ago that Dan and I might want to you know, do a little side project here or there. Maybe I mean, it's basically it was, we were just doing it off the books and it's kind of we'll use these pages somewhere down the road. And then at some point with the success of World's Finest, I guess, uh, they realized they had something here. And Dan was great enough to sign on board for a full time second book because he's that He's that fast. He can do two books a month. And his interpretation of that character is so amazing. It's so good. And, yeah. you know, we're going to talk about Dan a lot today because yeah. as we, as we should. Yes. It's so funny how 
his style walks the line between, you know, it doesn't feel like he's doing whimsy, you know, even as there's like whimsical elements in this story, you know, just as world's finest, when there are horrific elements or surreal elements, they are disturbing. But the rest of the time, it is this very straightforward heroic book. And just as like Superman looks like a leading man in world's finest, the captain looks kind of like rosy cheeked and like this character looked for so many decades in the past. I can't believe how faithful Dan is to the spirit of the character and the look of the character. One of the, one of the things no one has noticed except me is on that first issue cover, you know, he's bursting out of pages of Shazam from years of, of old. And I assumed that they were just stats of the original, you know, comic book. And then I saw something that didn't look quite right. And I went back and did a comparison and no, he redrew, he redrew every single, so every image on this page came from Dan's pen. None of it is, is like a pickup art from an old comic. He just recreated this stuff and made it look terrific. He has a way of being able to draw anything from any period in DC history and make it look contemporary and make it look modern. And that is the secret of all of this. He is the secret sauce. I can't believe that he drew all of those background images. I just assumed they were, you know, that they were reprints or whatever. Like that's unbelievable. Yeah, I did, I did too. And then I, yeah. And then I saw one of the panels and I thought, well, that's not right. Kid Eternity's been in that panel. Why is there that come from? So I went and looked, <laughs> I went and found that panel for him. And I'm still looking for the, for the, for the, one of the other panels on the page. I'll find it eventually one of these days. This has a very classic Shazam feel to it. Um, you know, I do feel, look, there have been good Shazam comics pretty much always, okay? But I feel like so many modern Shazam stories have struggled with the essence of the character. This just leans into it. There's like no apologies whatsoever for what kind of you feel that spirit of the character is. So what... What do you think makes up an essential Shazam story? Like, what were the bits that you knew you had to get into this book? I Just the general tongue-in-cheek nature of it and being unafraid to commit to the whimsy of it and the fact that it can be a funny book as well as, as we'll see in this issue and on, com and on you know, coming issues coming up, a very, a very startling and, and very shocking book too. We liked, I like moving up and down the tone but I, uh, the secret really is just settling back into the basic concept. Kid says a magic word, becomes a superhero. There's a talking tiger. You know, there's there's gods. There's magic. There's a sense of of fun to it. And I understand why so many people in the past 20, 30 years have been afraid of leaning into that because the mar <laughs> nothing in the comics market suggests that there is a place for this. Uh, every you know the, the fear of oh gosh people won't take it seriously and it's not grim and gritty enough. I understand why people feel that way, but I felt like it was time to roll the dice and if I'm going to do it, fully commit. I mean, you fully commit to the point where we even for the first time in over a decade now kind of give him a name like he's supposed to have with uh, with the, with the captain. Yeah. So was that a tough sell? You know, that's like, that's like kind of been a third rail with this character for a while. Right? It has been. It wasn't a tough sell only because it's really sort of informal in the comics. I mean, it's not like you're going to see merchandise with the captain as, as a logo on the character on a beach towel. But I just, I was very uncomfortable with him being called Shazam because then he can't say his own name out loud. And if he can and you set up a situation by which, oh, sometimes the word works and sometimes it doesn't, then to me that takes all the magic out of the concept and out of the word. It's not a magic word anymore. So obviously, you know, the original name, Captain Marvel, off the table. Uh, another name, Captain Thunder, another one we bandied about, also off the table because of other trademarks from other companies. This was, this was our compromise. And is it a little generic? Uh, yes. If anybody has any better ideas that are legally sound, I'm all ears. I, look, for years, I have been wondering, why don't they just go with Captain Thunder? And I would have thought that that one Bronze Age Superman story 
would have locked up the Captain Thunder name. I guess not. Some, nope. Somebody, somebody's got the trademark right now, and it's not us. So, um, but the captain works. The captain works just fine. It's like it's like Doctor Who. Yeah. You know, he doesn't call himself Doctor Who. He's just the Doctor. He's the captain. Ooh. And people call I him like that. Captain. That's a good so yeah, yeah. That's that's really where the idea came from. Yeah. How far ahead are you planned on this book? Gosh, I issue six, seven, eight, somewhere along in there. I mean, you know, it's an ongoing, so we're good to go as long as people are buying the book. But we've, you know, I, I've got a big list. I, when I started World's Finest, I made a giant wish list of all the characters in the DC universe that I would love to touch upon in World's Finest. And some of them were sillier than others, and some of them were a little more whimsical than others. It's kind of hard to fit Batmite into world's finest as we're setting it up now. But I went through the list and was able to pull out, oh, well, a tattooed man is not much of a menace for Superman and Batman, but hey, that might be a good Shazam story. So going through the list, there's so many characters that I can play with and you'll see so many. I mean, like I think I mentioned before we went on the air, we got uh, Gorilla City coming up in issue three. Uh, we have Gargawak, the emperor of the moon from Doom Patrol showing up in issue four. Uh, one of my favorite things to do overall, and you've seen it World's Finest, is have characters pairing up that you've never seen pair up before, right? I mean, Cap has an interesting world, ro Rogue's Gallery, and we'll get to that. We'll get to Mr. Mind. We'll get to Savannah. But right now, I'm really interested in, okay, what is it like to have him fight, you know, Luther or whatever? So, you know, some character that he, we don't normally see him fight. Well, folks... That is it for this week's DC Standup. We will be back soon, I promise. I don't know that we'll have a guest as cool as Mark Wade, but I'll see what no. I can do. Don't forget to check out our web home, denigeek.com. You find all our DC coverage at denigeek.com slash DC. Drop us a line on Twitter and Instagram. We are at DC Standup. Let us know what you want to hear about in upcoming episodes. Uh, give us a follow. You know the drill. And thanks again to our sponsor, Outright Games and Justice League Cosmic Chaos. Head over to OutrightGames.com for more info on that fun new game. Don't forget to check out our Marvel show. This Friday, we're doing a live stream about the amazing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And uh, I think that's it for this episode. But this has been DC Standup on the Denny Network. Until next time, remember, folks... We stand together. <laughs>